And a look at the lineups for tonight's game, beginning with Canada. I was talking to head coach Evan Pellerud earlier today, and he said he's never used a lineup that looks exactly like this, so he's not afraid of changes. Defending area, and then we've got Sherolta Nonan playing up in the midfield area. That's very unique. He's never Sherolta's usually a defender. And up front, we've got Hooper, Sinclair, and Latham. That should be a good, good striking position there. And as far as the United States is concerned, well, when you take a look at their lineup, you will recognize many of those names, especially the likes of Mia Hamm and Brandy Chastain. And for Captain Julie Foudy, she joins Elite Company here. This is her 200th cap to join Christine Lilly and Mia Hamm. Quite an accomplishment for her. Oh, wonderful accomplishment for her. And what's interesting is Christine Lilly is not playing today. She's there. She's a sub, but she's not starting, as well as Tiffany Milbert, who's one of their top goal scorers. So that's an interesting move by the U.S. squad. Well, you may see them before the game is over. And keep in mind, this is a home-and-home -home series because there is a return engagement July 3rd in Blaine, Minnesota. So perhaps they'll play in that one. Yeah, it's interesting that maybe the coach is uh, using some sort of strategy, keeping a few players fresh for that game. But uh, the, the U.S. squad out there, it's going to be an amazing, strong squad. And same for the Canadian squad. They've, they've done well in the past. And uh, Coach Pellerud is, is prepared for this and excited. It's first game at home. Unbelievable. He took over this team in the fall of 1999. His first game, his first series of games was the Algarve Cup in March of 2000. And since then, he has yet to lead his team into battle here in Canada. His record is 13 wins, 14 losses, and one draw. The last game being that last loss in that trip to Europe, 9-1 to to Norway. And so finally, after a couple of years at the helm, he gets to coach his team here in Canada. And for the United States, this is really the first time their World Cup team has been together this year because they've used a lot of young players in the last few games. Yeah, I think uh, talking with the coach, he's trying really to prepare the young players. For years, they've had the senior players, the same senior players on the squad. And you really, as a coach, you got to start integrating some young players into the system. And that's what she's doing. She's getting them prepared because in the future, these are the players that are going to take over the realms. Now, since we have time here for a minute, maybe we can elaborate a little bit on the goalkeeping situation for Canada because the two goalies of the past, as we look at the referees for this one, and it's Sonia Denencourt, the well-established and, and highly regarded Canadian refereeing this game. It's usually Karina LeBlanc and Nikki Wright. Evan Pellerud has decided right now that Terran Swiatek is perhaps maybe the goalie of the future, although he's not sure yet. But as a result, he had Swiatek and LeBlanc in for this one. Nikki Wright was not flown in. And then LeBlanc got hurt in practice yesterday, and so he had to make the change. Weather for today, it's cool off, it's not so bad now. It was a very hot, muggy day in Toronto. Temperature was well into the 30s. It's breezy and temperature is not bad at all, quite comfortable, and we're set to go. And the stand, they are full. I guess it's probably nine or 10,000 now as you look at Mia Hamm as she gets set for this one. And how exciting for the players, the Canadian players, to come home to play their first home game in two years and to have a sellout crowd. They must be absolutely ecstatic and just talking to the players, they're ready to go, they're ready to play. Canada in red, the United States in white. Mia Hamm and Shannon McMillan up front for the United States. And for Canada, it'll be Charmaine Hooper with support in behind from the veteran Silvana Bertini. And on the flanks, it'll be Christine Latham and Christine Sinclair pushing forward as well. Sinclair in the near side wearing number eight. Latham in the far side wearing number four. And there's Charmaine Hooper, the Caps leader all time for Canada with 77. The goals leader as well. She's got 47 goals for her country. She plays for the Atlanta Beat of the new WUSA, and we are underway from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. And it should be exciting to see Christine Sinclair, one of the dynamos, one year on the squad, and one of the top goal scorers for Canada. Well, Christine Sinclair, we will watch for her. She wears number eight. She has played 28 times. She has scored 20 goals. That's quite a games-to-goals ratio, isn't That's it? That's unbelievable for a young player like her. She's got so many years ahead of her, and Evan Pellerud must be just so excited to have a player so young doing so well at this age. This is Sinclair with the ball. Back in that case to Andrea Neal, and here goes Sinclair. Trying to get it through to Charmaine Hooper too far and all the way to the U.S. keeper in tonight's game, Jamie Pagliarulo. <laughs> Canadian captain Amy Walsh sends it forward. Neal for Sinclair. Cleared away that time by Catherine Reddick, one of the young rising stars, according to U.S. coach April Heinrichs. And again, there's another young player that April Heinrichs has brought in and has done a wonderful job playing for the U.S. squad. Up 
kickoff cleared away there by Isabel Harvey. Evan Pellerud, 47-year-old from Norway, took over as we talked about at the top of the show a couple of years ago, finally coaching in Canada, barking out instructions right now, and his next goal is to prepare this team for the next World Cup, which will come around so quickly, 2003. And I think he's uh, preparing for those games by playing lots of matches this year and getting ready for those qualification games next year. Harvey is back, under pressure to Amy Walsh, who clears it. Kept in by the United States, however. Number 17, watch for her. Alicia Kramer is her name. She's one of another one of the young stars that Heinrichs likes, and he, she's inserted her right into the lineup here tonight. An, inter an interesting note, too. Oh, there she is. There's April Heinrichs, and uh, talked with her yesterday, and she's really excited about this game and looking forward to playing Canada home and away. July 3rd, the return engagement in Blaine, Minnesota. There's Charon Swiatek, young Canadian keeper, with her first action on the ball. But the United States forward with Ham. Mia Ham in the corner, watched by Harvey. Ham across into the box, headed away that time. There's Andrea Neal who got that one away, but it's kept inside the Canadian zone. And so Canada under a little bit of pressure in the early going here, with the United States forcing the issue a little bit. And I got to wonder how nervous Terrence Swiatek must be at the back. Never playing against the U.S. The best, one of the best teams in the world. But so far, you know, she looks confident back there. Definitely not uh, lack of confidence for her. 20 years old from Calgary. Plays for the Ottawa Fury. Number four for Canada on the far side is Christine Latham. But here come the United States again. Now Canada on the return. Charlton Nonan. United States forward. That one there looking for Shannon McMillan. But here comes Pierce in its side for Shannon McMillan. Swiatek comes way out off her mark and she handles that one. What a great job by Swiatek to come out and clean that up, ball coming through, and Shannon McMillan coming so quickly in on her, but she had no problem sweeping that up. And Cindy Parlow and Shannon McMillan teaming up on that one. McMillan with the break, breaking through on Swiatek, but Swiatek came out smartly to make that play. Looked like the Canadian defenders were expecting a call there, but uh, didn't look like an offside. Chastain back to get that one, knocks it clear. Hooper. In deep, and out comes Pagliarulo as Latham was in deep on that one. Here's a look at that last chance by the U.S. And what a great ball through. And there's Shannon McMillan running in, and Swiatek just a great job of cleaning that one up. Timing perfect in the case of Swiatek there. Throw in for Canada. Latham. And it's Canada's ball still deep in the corner. Isabel Harvey moves up to take the throw in. Harvey for Hooper. Hooper with the foul there, and it'll be the U.S. ball. Chastain. Christine Latham for Canada just doing a great job. She is such a hustler. She works so hard. She's down at Nebraska now with the rest of the Nebraska grand, uh, gang and uh, obviously doing very well. She's, she's done wonders for the Canadian squad. Christine Latham, University of Nebraska, five goals for Canada in her career. U.S. putting the ball in play. Cindy Parlow was the target of that one, but is unable to do anything with it. Ham working against Harvey, Canada's ball. I think that's a good matchup. Mia Ham and uh, Isabel Harvey. Isabel Harvey is so fast and so fit, and you need that to play against Mia Ham, one of the best players in the world. Parlow sends it forward. That was meant for Ham, but Harvey is all the way back there. And perhaps feeling she was under more pressure than she really was, just cleared that one away. So it's a throw into the U.S. for Ham. For Parlow, but she commits the foul. It's Canada's ball here. Cindy Parlow looking to be the youngest player to reach 100 caps. If she plays in both matches, she's at, at she was at 98 going into this one. Now she's at 99. 
The WSA we referred to earlier, and Canada has a contingent there as well. These players all in this game tonight. And that's so important to have players playing in that league. All the best players in the world playing in one, la one league is unbelievable. Karina LeBlanc obviously not playing due to an injury. Yeah, I said uh, all those players playing. Obviously, LeBlanc is not with the bad ankle, but at any rate, that is great to see those players in that league, and let's hope to see a whole lot more. The Canadian player down is Amy Walsh from the Atlanta Beat. That would be a tough one for, for Evan Pellerud if Amy has to go off. She's a great defender, and she's a key player in this. And there's a tackle right here. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened there with Cindy Parlow. Looked like they got they hit each other's shins. It looked like a pretty tough tackle, and Amy's shin seemed to be got caught up in uh, Cindy Parlow's legs, too, there. The end result is the stretcher on the field for Amy Walsh. So Evan Pellerode losing his captain at least momentarily. Amy looking to be in some pain there. So I know Amy Walsh. She's a tough player. She takes a lot. So she must be, she must be hurting. Walsh is from St. Bruno, Quebec, and Pellerode obviously won't be too happy to see this. And from the looks of that, it looks like Evan Pellerode's getting a substitute prepared and ready. Oh yeah, that she does not look too good right now. She's obviously in some discomfort. Just coming from Atlanta, I watched Walsh. And who's coming in for Amy Walsh? We have a substitute coming in. Well, it looks as though probably, although we can't be sure just yet. We'll see. So there's the throw in in the meantime as they tend to Walsh on the sidelines. Swiatek clears it, but it's knocked back in. Parlo. Good move from Cindy Parlow. She's got two players on her, and finally Silvana Bertini comes back to clean it up for Harvey. Harvey clears. And it looks like uh, Evans got Randy Hermes warming up. So there could be a change for Canada here in the early going. We've only played less than 10 minutes. And interestingly enough, Cindy Parlow and Amy Walsh play on the same team in the WSA, the Atlanta Beat. Yeah. yeah Catherine Reddick sends it forward down to the far side. And now here we come with the United States on the attack again. And Parlow's ball that time. Or pardon me, that was not Cindy Parlow. That was Alicia Kramer. The young one. Making her mark out there. She's a tall one, too. Just 18 years old, 5 foot 11, and Heinrichs really, really thinks that this girl will be a star of the future for her team. And she has a lot of confidence in her. She's been starting her in a lot of matches, and uh, she's been doing a great job out here so far. Andrea Neal knocks it downfield a little bit. The United States seemed to manage to keep the pressure on all the time. Parlo for Ham that time, but this will be Canada's ball. I think Canada's doing a really good job of keeping up with the Americans, closing them down as soon as they get the ball, and really just being right on top of them any, any chance they get. And you know what might be good for Swiatek in this game? She has not had to make any really difficult saves, but she has been involved a little bit, which might be good for her. Almost definitely, especially in the early stages of a game. You just want to get a feel for the game, get the ball, touch the ball a little bit, get involved, and perhaps not be subject to shot after shot. And she's been that. She's been involved. And this gives her confidence in, in the game as it goes on. Isabel Morneau downfield for Hooper, who's knocked for a loop there. In that case, by Kate Sobrero. So Sobrero with a foul on Hooper. That was a great ball through for Hooper. Hooper having the foot advantage there, and perhaps that's why Kate had to stick a little shoulder in to get her to slow down. Another look at that last tackle. Yep, Charmaine looked to have a foot in front there, and Kate Sobrero knows that when Charmaine gets free, watch out. Here's the ball in from Charlton Nonan to the far side. There's the header into the box. Hooper was there, but in front of her was the keeper, Jamie Pagliarulo. So a decent opportunity for Canada without a real strong scoring opportunity, but the chances may be coming. I think it's great to see Canadians winning those balls in the air, getting on top of them. I mean, it was, was, wasn't perhaps a scoring chance, but at least they're winning 
This might be one here with Sinclair for Hooper too far, but it started from Sherolta Nonan. She worked it forward to Christine Sinclair, and then the ball for Hooper was just too far, but some more encouraging signs there from the Canadian team. And great to see young Sinclair making her mark out there, and not as a goal scorer, but also as a playmaker. That ball headed back from Nonan all the way to Swiatek. Henry Neal with the header. Cindy Parlo gaining possession. Heading it forward. Chastain moves forward. Back comes Bertini. Sylvana Bertini. Then she is just possessed, and here's the United States again. Chastain looking all the way across in that case for Shannon McMillan, but didn't happen. Here's Christy Pierce. And into the game right now for Canada is Christina Kiss. So Christina Kiss is now into this one, and Amy Walsh is out due to that leg injury. And that's a good move. Christina Kiss, 25 caps under her belt, so she's got a lot of experience. I was actually surprised to see that she wasn't starting today. And pushing Sherolta Nonan back into the back, that's a comfortable position for Sherolta as well. Ball sent all the way down, but Canada with four at the back waiting for that one. And Swiatek is there to clear. Goes Kramer for that one against Kiss. A little Canada's bit of a ball. height disadvantage for Kiss. A little bit. Kramer is listed at five foot eleven. And Cindy Parlow is five foot eleven as well. So the United States with lots of height. Here's Pierce with room down the right side. Back into the middle, she was looking for Julie Foudy, but didn't happen. There's Bertini. Bertini for Hooper. Andrea Neal forward to Sinclair. Sinclair with good work there against Kate Sobrero, who pulls her down. That has to be a yellow card. Oh, that was definitely sure. intentionally. Kate Sobrero. Pulling down Christine Sinclair from behind, and there's the caution for Sobrero. <laughs> there is not much doubt that that was intentional all the way. Well, Christine Sinclair was on her way, and Christine Sinclair can score goals. Kate Sobrero knows that. She gives her a tug of the shirt and makes sure she has no chance of going forward. She just didn't tug on it. She <laughs> held on for dear life. The ball into the box, the header, and there's the rebound, and it scores! Charmaine Hooper has scored! for Canada, it's one nothing. What a great job by Canada there. Charmaine Hooper making sure that one hit the back of the net and hit it with force. So in the 15th minute, Canada drawing first blood. And that one came very quickly. And it was a rebound after a great initial save from Pagliarulo. And Charmaine Hooper has her 48th goal for Canada. And that's why Charmaine Hooper is considered one of the best players in the world right there. She gets in the middle of it. You know, you don't see her for a little bit, but once she's in there, she's dangerous. Here's Parlo now as the U.S. try to counter quickly. That ball is offside. Slatuck clears. Here's Hooper again. Chastain is watching her. Back it goes, Christine Kiss nearly got through, but it was broken up by Catherine Reddick. United States back, Parlo is onside, but Swiatek is way out to clear that time. Ham can't get away. Harvey to Kiss. Kiss is looking for Leif, and Chastain hustles back and gets it to Pagliarulo. There's one sent in that was a bit of a wayward ball until Pagliarulo recovers. Interesting to see Silvana Bertini playing in the middle of the park. In all my years playing with the national squad, Silvana Bertini always played as a, in the striker position. She's doing a great job in there. Amazing to see her just adjust so well to that position. Swiatek under a little bit of pressure there from both Ham and McMillan, but recovers, and she looks like she's very much in control back there despite the fact that she's only 20 and this is just her third start. American player is down. That's Brandy Chastain. His play continues. Oh, she's back on her feet now. Into the middle for Hooper. Foul, or for Bertini, but the foul by Hooper. 
Well, this is a friendly, Jerry, but it's definitely not a friendly for the players on the field. They're playing their hearts out out there. Back that time is Knowlton to break that one up. Here's Bertini. From the Carolina Courage, 35 times she has scored for Canada. Here's Brianna Boyd. Boyd for Sinclair. That one's broken up by Pierce. Here's Hooper. Foudy is on her, and then breaking it up is Sobrero. And she didn't tug on her jersey either. And a look now at the goal. Well, a great touch there by Andrea Neal, and a final ball. Charmaine Hooper making no mistakes. <laughs> good initial save by Pagliarulo, but there's no way she can handle the rebound. So Canada drawing first blood. And nine or 10,000 here are very happy. It definitely energized the fans, Jerry. Here's Boyd. Sobrero knocks it forward. For Parlo, Canada's ball. Boyd will put it in play. Boyd from the University of Nebraska. Andrea Neal there, looking for this one. Plays for the Vancouver Breakers. There's McMillan for Ham. There's Isabel Harvey to break that up. There's Foudy. Carlo into the middle, but lots of Canadian defenders there. Known in his back. Forward for Christine Latham, but Latham fouls Chastain. Apparently. Apparently, I would have expected it to go the other way. Here's Parlo. That ball goes left untouched until. Christina Kiss gives it to Bertini and then forward to Latham. Hooper and Sinclair racing down to get in position. Latham finally loses out. Hooper tries to help out. Chastain recovers and sends it back to Pagliarulo. That was a great ball over to Christine Latham by Silvana Bertini. And if you notice, she used the outside of her foot just to keep that ball in play, kept the spin on it. Wonderful ball. Just a lot of skill and a lot of technique used in that. Foudy. Back to Chastain. There's Parlo. Parlo losing a lot of possession so far in this match, surprisingly. Latham, watched by Chastain. That's great defending by Kate Sobrero. Here's Foudy. Down the left side for him, but it's offside. Pardon me, that's Shannon McMillan, obviously. Yeah, you'll find those American strikers, they just rotate positions constantly. Yeah, they do move around. Ham was on the left side there for the early part of the game, and McMillan was more in the middle, and now they've switched over. Yeah, they give them that freedom, allow them to move around, and that really confuses defenders. Here's Sherolta Nonan. U.S. ball. Christina Kiss who came on for the injured Amy Walsh earlier in the half. Nonan there with the foul on Carlo, and so the United States will have the ball in a pretty good position here. Haven't seen a real spark in the American attack yet. Surprisingly enough, that's what they're known for. Cindy Parlow there, a veteran at the ripe old age of 23. <laughs> Hard to believe, 100 caps. Playing in her 99th today, 100th will take place on Tuesday in Minnesota. There's the ball sent in, and it's a good one, too. And off her line with Swiatek to knock it away, but it's not out of pressure here. Cleared away that time by Hooper, who was back. Racing to do the rest of it is Christina Kiss. And she goes down dangerously along the boards there, the advertising boards outside of the line. And Shannon McMillan comes over to help her back up. There's Nonan now under pressure, and she gets it out. Swiatek doing an amazing job of coming out for that one. Here's McMillan. Up for Foudy.
nothing doing on that one. And so Swiatek, who's been very busy and, and looks a lot more mature and a lot more confident and composed than you might think, doesn't she? Oh, most definitely. And just seeing her come out for that cross, one of the hardest things for keepers is the confidence to come out and to know when to come out, their timing. She seems to have that down packed, and you see that there in that play. And now Canada will have the ball in a good position here on that play after the foul against Christine Latham. By number six, Brandy Chastain. Christine Latham just causing a lot of havoc for the U.S. defenders. Christina Kiss will take this one. Man marking going on by the United States. Headed in and, or knocked in, pardon me, and then headed out. Christina Kiss, and this will be Canada's throw in. Look at the players on this team from the West Coast. All from the Vancouver Breakers, and Christine Sinclair is perhaps the, the rising star, although they're all solid players, but Sinclair has been the one who's been really impressive for Pelleru the last year or so. And there's a bit of a, almost a dangerous ball for Morneau back to Swiatek, who has no trouble roaming all over the place, does she? Not at all. She's uh, definitely confident back there, and it's nice to have a keeper that you feel confident enough to pass the ball to. Cooper is fouled right at the center stripe. It's quickly put back into play by Andrew Neal all the way to Pagliarulo. And it is very windy here this evening, so that might have an effect on balls that are way up in the air. Oh, most definitely. And it's nice to see the Canadians have really tried to keep their balls low and hard, which takes, really doesn't take into effect the, the wind blowing. And you saw that with Christina Kiss. She put a great cross in. It was nice and hard, not a floating ball. Guerrero's ball for Parlo goes all the way to Nonan, Sholta Nonan, and she sends it back to Swiatek. Headed back in by Lori Fair, all the way down into the corner. With Nolan there working against Isabel Harvey, and Harvey wins out. What a great, great place to have Isabel Harvey. She's probably one of the fastest players on the team as well as one of the fittest and that doesn't take into account all the technical skills she have, has as well which is amazing. Well it doesn't seem to matter whether they send Shannon McMillan or Mia Hamm down that side. Isabel Harvey seems to be able to handle whatever comes her way. And it's amazing when when she first started playing with the national team she was a, a flank or a, a forward so it's great to see her playing defense is one of the hardest positions and to adjust from a forward and midfielder to that position is wonderful. The United States trying to regroup here. This is Pierce. For Kramer, back to Pierce. Sobrero. Over to Reddick. Reddick's ball. Harvey had moved up and misplayed that one a little bit, but back is known in the cover. And that's what Charlton Nonan is doing back there at the defensive area. She cleans up everything. She's fast. And uh, any mistakes, you know she's going to be there for you. Here's the throw in. Flicked nicely in front for Ham, who tries to square and get a shot at it and was unable to really get what she wanted on it. And she'd love to have another go with that one. Yeah, unfortunately, bad bounce for Mia Ham. She thought she had that one, but uh, bounced away from her in an awkward position and then hit the outside of her foot. Here's Morneau. Sobrero back the other way. Knocked out by Alicia Kramer. Canada doing a good job of not allowing the Americans to get any rhythm here. Well, they haven't had a decent opportunity yet. Had Ham been able to strike that last ball, that would have been really the only chance they've had in the game. And it didn't materialize. Sobrero sends it back to Pagliarulo. Sinclair makes her force the issue. And as a result, Canada, well, momentarily at least, had possession still. Lori Fair is back. For Pierce. Through the middle, Parlo flicks it off for McMillan. Hooper comes back to help out. Her and Andrea Neal get botched up a little bit, but they recover nicely. Here's Morneau. Just going to say, Canada playing so composed there, except for that last ball. Parlo. 
Ham. Ham with lots of time, sends it across. McMillan heads it in, but there's nobody there to look for any uh, rebound. It's unusual. Usually when you watch the U.S. player, they're, they're all over the field. They're so hard to keep track of. And they don't seem to be moving around as much. They're very stationary and really not in the, the same positions you'd normally see them in. Charmaine Hooper, Canada's best goal scorer, but she comes back and plays defense when needed as well. And seems to have been energized the last couple of years under the regime of Evan Pellerou. Yeah, Charmaine's very, very happy with the way things are going, and uh, and she loves playing against the Americans. And every time I talk to her before a U.S. game, she's just so excited about going out there and playing her heart out. I'm talking to her before the game earlier today at the Ontario Soccer Association Center, there was a, a rally with a bunch of youth teams involved, and there was an opportunity for all the kids to get autographs from the from the national team players. And, I was talking to Hooper about that before the game and she said the only regret she had was that they couldn't stay longer. <laughs> so that's what it tells you what these women are like. And there's a mistake by Swiatek and it results in a goal for the U.S. And that one came from nowhere. And Swiatek really, after we talked about how well she'd been playing, bobbled that one badly, I'm afraid, and now it's 1-1. That, that really looked unfortunate there, Jerry. It looked like the ball, and we'll see it here, Looked like it took a funny bounce. And it, it looked like it just bounced up higher. Maybe it hit a little divot. Uh, the penalty shot area looks like there's a divot in there. Hard to, to understand how she would have misplayed that, but I would think that there it hit a, a funny bounce or it gave, gave a funny bounce because she was all keyed up to save that one. Well, and it might have been deflected as well. There was a Canadian defender in between the shooter, Shannon McMillan, and the keeper, Swiatek. So McMillan with the goal, and it's 1-1. Wow. That's unfortunate for Canada. They've been playing so well, but I mean, they're just going to have to regroup and, and continue to play the way they've been playing. And for Shannon McMillan, that's her 35th goal for the United States in her 125th game. Pagliarulo now. Back there is Morneau to knock it away, and here's Nolan. Kiss. And that ball was out. That one looked to just get away from Christina Kiss there and uh, unfortunately went out of bounds. Fastane puts it back in for Foudy. Here's Julie Foudy. Looking for Alicia Kramer. Kramer forward for Ham. He takes it down nicely. Ham through the middle for Lori Fair, who had stepped forward, but Nonan had moved back. And good clear by Nonan. That Although Nonan is down in the end zone there, beyond the end line, actually. Didn't see what happened to her. Well, she simply cleared the ball. I don't know what. She didn't look like anything, but when she cleared the ball, something happened. Her right oh. ankle. Oh, it looked like she twisted her ankle there. Yep, definitely. Turned over on her right ankle, I believe, and she's very slow to get up. Meanwhile, the United States ready to move forward with Christy Pierce taking the throw in, and she actually waits for Nonan to get back, and that's where we are right now. Morneau heads it away. Sinclair clears it the rest of the way, all the way to midfield. Reddick can't do anything with it. Oh, and there it's knocked right through to him, but it's offside. Great little attempt there by the United States squad. Seeing them a little bit more energized after their goal, perhaps trying to get a little bit more rhythm going in the match. Here's Brianna Boyd. McMillan lays it off for Foudy. Forward for Ham, but Harvey's there again. Fair. Back for Foudy. Hooper comes back, however. Ooh. Bertini against McMillan, and McMillan wins that. Takes a shot from well out, and a save, and off the post. Swiatek, I think, got a piece of it, and then off the post. Wow. What a great save by Swiatek. She just got a hand on that, hit the post, 
And you're just seeing the U.S. squad getting a little bit more uh, energy behind them, pushing forward. But great job by Swiatek to save that one. Well, they seem to have more room to maneuver right now, and the result is they are getting chances. They've got the equalizer and now look like they're ready to go ahead on chances like these. Here they come again. This one for Carlo in the middle. Morneau is back along with Boyd. Boyd to Harvey. Bertini can't take that ball down. The United States takes over again. Chastain to Reddick. Sobrero. Kate Sobrero takes a look and sends one down over everybody. Look at that last play now. What a great strike. And just a touch on it, just enough to hit the post and get it out. That's all you need. And again, there's the strike, beautifully taken and beautifully saved. Young Taryn Swiatek. Well, this is not the first game she's had lots to do. She was on the wrong end of a couple of scores in that disastrous European trip, 5-2 to two against Sweden and 7-1 to one against Germany. And I guess as a goalkeeper, Jerry, that's what you want. Lots of shots taken on you. But not all those goals. No, definitely. It's been a lively first half. 12 minutes and time added on is what remains here. A goal for each side and some other opportunities as well. Here's Parlo who can't advance against Boyd, but it will be the U.S. ball. The throw in to be taken by Pierce. Foudy. Into the middle to Kramer, but it's knocked away by Boyd, but she didn't get what she wanted there, and it barely gets out. Bertini gets the rest of the way out, but it's forced right back in again by Reddick. Here's Foudy. For Ham. Back to Foudy. The United States continually winning balls here. And you see they're, uh, they're a little bit more pumped up since their goal, and you see them just connecting with those passes now. One, twos, you know, really taking one touch, two touch, and, and connecting with a lot of players. Deep in the corner is McMillan. Sends it out in front. Nonan is there. The hand comes across quickly to thwart the clearing attempt. There's a ball into the box, and their hustle right now is paying off. Nolan with an opportunity to clear there, but Ham's hustle made sure it didn't happen. It's great to see a player like Mia Ham working so hard. She's so well known for her goal scoring ability, but she's also amazing at defending, and you saw it right there, just challenging for everything. Here's Brianna Boyd. To try and get Canada out of the zone here is the United States pressuring just a little bit here at this stage, looking for the go ahead goal. Here's Pierce. Back to Sobrero. Reddick. Lori Fair. Then right back to her. Fair into the corner where Pierce was hiding basically and left untouched. Across it goes and it's headed away by Nonan before McMillan can do it. There's Fair. Into the corner, Parlo. The United States really looking for, for goals here now. Sinclair comes back and clears it, but that's going nowhere as Sobrero was there to gobble it up. And the entire Canadian squad is pulled back, trying to defend against this uh, American squad, giving them a little bit of space in their defensive third and attacking, uh, keeping it close in the uh, attacking third for the U.S. And Swiatek is forced to just knock it away without any thought to where it's going because she was under pressure. And the United States will retain possession well inside Canada's zone here. Randy Chastain. For Foudy. Foudy flicks it in there. Parlo tried to knock it down, but couldn't keep control of it. And finally, Swiatek will be able to get it out for Canada. U.S. creating a lot more scoring chances for themselves these last 10 minutes. Lots of crosses. Just not getting on the end of any of them, thank goodness. <laughs> Geralta Nonan has done well to come back time and again to clear balls in this first half. Here's Swiatek. Here's 
Christine Latham. Chastain wins it for the U.S. and is then committing the foul is Chastain. She thinks she was the victim, not the culprit. Looked a little, uh, little tough out there. I know Christine Latham. She's a tough player, and uh, she stands on her two feet. Has to be really pulled to get down. Well, another thing that Hooper said the other day was that Canadians play a very scrappy physical game, and it's something that the Americans don't necessarily enjoy that much. They're more of a finesse team, and so they'll try and exploit that if they can. But right now, the United States is having it their way with a score line at one each. Yeah, that's definitely true. Watching the uh, Canadians practice to earlier this week and then watching the Americans, the Americans are all about finesse. And the way to get them off their game is by being physical with them, by being tough with them, and not letting them have time on the ball. And there's a good job in the corner by Christine Latham trying to win that one. And she gets a, a round of applause for her efforts. But in the end, Pagliarulo takes over. And for the last 10 minutes, she's hardly had to touch the ball. Morneau heads it away, but quickly the United States come forward. That was Kramer getting it forward. Morneau again has to clear with Ham bothering her. Here's Parlo then. Pierce. Reddick. Foudy. Looking for McMillan, no dice. It is looking like those American players, especially in the midfield, they just have a little bit more time on the ball. Giving them a little bit of time allows the players to set up, and that's what they seem to be doing now. Nonan. Into the middle for Kiss. Hooper, just a touch on to Latham, who turns around and gets by Chastain, who recovers. But Latham gets it to Hooper. Into the middle, Neal is there. Sinclair looking for it. But there's Pagliarulo. Andrea Neal is so good in the air and great to see her getting on the end of these. As a midfield player, really has to do a lot of running to defend and then to get on the end of crosses as well. Boyd clears. Sobrero steps forward. Here's Foudy. McMillan. Nice move by Shannon McMillan. And then in for Ham, no offside. The Canadian players hesitated, looking for the offside, didn't get it. And Ham is just doing wonders with it into fair, and her header is off the mark. Definitely have to give credit to Swiatek right there for coming out of her, off of her line and attacking Mia Ham, because Mia Ham loves to attack goalkeepers. And Evan Pellerud not happy with the way things are going these last several minutes. So here's Swiatek now. Mellon is there. Here's Hooper trying to break three, free through the middle, unable to do so. Fair takes it down. Neil couldn't stop her. Here's Parlo, bothered by Boyd. McMillan. Parlo. Ham is ahead, looking for it, and now has it. Into the box, and Kramer is pushed down there. No foul called. <laughs> the other way, Sinclair can't control it. Sobrero makes sure by sending it back to Pagliarulo. Andrea Neal for Canada. Back to Nonan. Nice little move by Nonan against Ham. A lot of composure shown by Sherilta Nona, a young player, but doing a great job playing like a veteran. Boy, down for Sinclair. Sobrero, though, feeds it to Foudy. Here's Kramer. Chastain. Foudy. Mia Ham. Foudy again. Good ball control here by the United States. McMillan. Boyd is back. McMillan gets it through. Foudy had moved forward, and Nonan was back. And it's Nonan almost every time coming back. And to, to think that Nonan was playing in the midfield at first, probably a good thing that they put her back in that defensive end. She's doing an amazing job cleaning up everything. Well, if you recall, Amy Walsh had started back there, and Nonan was in midfield. But when Walsh was injured, on came 
Christina Kiss and Nonan has dropped back. And here's a great play, just a good combination play. Ball getting through there, and a great clear by Sherolta Nonan. Ham has it. Fair. Fair to Pierce. Pierce with Morno racing against her, and it goes for a corner kick. Good job by Christy Pierce against Isabel Morneau. And Morneau, knowing she had to get a foot on that one, definitely did the right thing, slid in and gave away a corner, but something she had to do. Coming across to take it is Shannon McMillan. Sent in smartly and trying to get a foot on it there was, I think that was Chastain who had moved up, couldn't get a, a clear shot at it. Shannon McMillan, those are just beautiful balls coming in from the, from the corner. That's exactly how you want a ball to go in. Nice and hard and at head level so that, you know, you don't allow the goalkeeper to set up and uh, just amazing corner kicks there. Pierce now for the U.S. Back to Sobrero. Redick. Chastain. Reddick then to Foudy. McMillan couldn't handle that one as Morneau had stepped forward. Hooper goes down against Fair, no foul. Here's Parlow to McMillan. Pierce forward for Parlo. Brianna Boy just lets it go, for, so it'll be Canada's ball. And like I mentioned before, the one thing that I didn't see the U.S. doing in the first half of the game was moving around a lot. You're seeing that now. Players moving up, moving into different positions, really confusing the Canadian defenders. Here's Boyd throwing. Pierce knocks it down. Parlo swings it into the middle. Nonan with the header, but Fair recovers for Kramer. To Chastain, who moves forward. Nonan clears for Canada. Most of the play now is in Canada's zone, and it has been for the last 15 minutes or so. <laughs> now, that time it's Latham who is tugged on. And Kramer gets the warning. For a young player, she's uh, she's definitely learned all the tricks to keeping a player back. And slowing a player down. That is one that definitely works <laughs> if you can get away with it. Here's Nonan. Morneau steps forward. Instead of trying to control it, she tried to pass it or shoot it, and she was unable to do much with it. Yeah, unfortunately, that just uh, hit the wrong side of her foot and uh, didn't get a good, didn't hit the ball very well. Here's Pierce. That time, Morneau or Isabel Harvey unable to control it. Here's McMillan. McMillan, she's got Parlow in the middle. McMillan squares to get a shot. And Nonan is there to basically simply dispossess her. Schroelter Nonan, just the key player back there in the defensive end. We're into time added on here. One minute of injury time. Here's Parlo. Back to Pierce. Sobrero and Foudy. Cooper intercepted that one for Bertini. Bertini with Fair hounding her, but Bertini is able to send it off to Isabel Harvey very nicely. Harvey for Latham. Chastain hustles back. And that will be U.S. ball. Savannah Bertini showing a lot of composure there. Obviously her experience coming through. Chastain to Reddick. And there is the halftime whistle. A very spirited first half as well.
uh, in the exciting first half. You know, the first half of that one was for Canada, and I'd say the U.S. dominated the second, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the second. Canada getting the opening goal from Charmaine Hooper, her 48th for her country. And she has the record number of appearances, 78 now to go along with that. And then the United States coming back on a bit of a sloppy goal from Shannon McMillan. And so the score at the half is 1-1. Coming up at the halftime, we'll have an update from Sports Central, and we will have our match analysis as well. So the score at the half is the United States 1 and Canada 1. Stick around, everybody. Our halftime show is still to come. Second half just about set to get underway from Varsity Stadium in Toronto, Canada and the United States. A couple of substitutions for the United States to start this second half. Shannon McMillan is off and Christine Lilly is in. Mia Hamm has uh, decided to take a seat for the second half and Tiffany Milbrett is on. And for the United States, or for Canada, I don't believe any substitutes at this point. I don't see any changes here for Canada. It also looks like Sir Langa, who just got the ball, has come on for the United States as well. That's a third one. You're correct. It's a Nikki Sir Langa is on for the United States. Trying to get a look at who she has replaced as we watch Sylvana Bertini looking for Christine Sinclair down the left side. Here's Kramer. Bothered by Hooper, gets away from her and Sinclair. Sobrero. All the way back. Reddick. For Foudy. Chastain. And that was for Christine Lilly, and she couldn't handle it. So it's Isabel Harvey back in play. And it does look like the uh, U.S. coach is definitely giving some of her players a rest for the next game, bringing Lilly in, taking Ham out. Well, and she can afford to. She's so deep, isn't she? Almost definitely. Any player you get out here can compete and uh, does an amazing job out there. the ball in deep. Nonan is in there. Can't do anything with it. The United States come away with it. That was Milbrit down deep. Here's Lilly. <laughs> Good work there from the wily veteran Silvana Bertini. What a great job by Bertini to maintain possession of that and just held off Lilly for that one. Well, with respect to Amy Walsh, who went out of the game earlier, we've received word that she has gone to Mount Sinai Hospital with a possible fracture of the fibula. And here's wow. that uh, tackle by Andrea Neal. Definitely a, a, definitely a tackle and definitely a card given there. Andrea Neal carded there, but not good news for Andrea Walsh with a possible broken leg. Pardon me, Amy Walsh. United States in deep here. And then it's taken away, and back comes Bertini. Foudy intercepts. That was not a great pass from Bertini. Foudy to Kramer. Kramer in for Milbrit, who simply falls, and it's cleared there by Harvey. But not out of danger. And the second half seems to have begun the way the first half ended, with the United States pressing for the go-ahead goal. Harlow knocked down by Bertini. No foul. Nonan clears. The shot from well out over the net. Well, well taken shot there. And just, Harlow. Yes, but just over the net. Great, great shot. And here's Parlo with the ball. She takes a nice turn, has a lot of space there. Gets, a, gets off a good shot and just over the net. Really quite close. Swiatek clearing. Hooper is there, bothered by Foudy. Gets it down, Sinclair on the run, but back nicely. In that case is Kate Sobrero. 
And Sinclair looking so dangerous, and the Americans taking no chances with Sinclair. Every time she's got a chance like that, they're just kicking it out. Now she has matured and developed as a player in the last year, in the last 28 games. There's no doubt about that. Oh. Rillo steps forward there. Amazing to see Sinclair. I watched her play when she first started. I was at that camp, and she was amazing then. But to see her, how much she's developed, especially her composure, is amazing. Sobrero takes a look and then hammers one down, but she was looking for Milbert. That didn't happen. Sinclair breaks it up and then Lily sends it back. Reddick. Chastain. Chastain with one move on Latham and then into the middle of the park for Nikki Serlenga. <laughs> You see Brandy Chastain making a run there. She loves to make those runs up the field. There's Nonan back again. What are they clipping your nails or is it more serious than that? <laughs> I suspect it's more serious than that. Maybe a little bit more serious. Probably just wanting to take a little bit of a break, too. Just uh, being careful with their star player. <laughs> Isabel Harvey. For Hooper. Oh, nice ball for Bertini. Couldn't quite break free. She was bothered there by Sobrero. But that was good work by Bertini and a good ball through by Hooper and it's a corner kick for Bertini. Really a wonderful ball through by Charmaine. Found the open space and Sylvana made the great run forward. Receiving that ball, having a great chance and getting a corner kick off of it. Here's Bertini's corner. Cleared away nicely. Nonan with the Second shot. And that goes away. I'm impressed with Cheryl Tanone, and she's played very well tonight for Evan Pellerou. What an amazing game she's had. She's probably been the key player for the Canadian squad. You know, really cleaning up that Canadian defense, not allowing the Americans to get many chances on the ball, not giving them a lot of, a lot of time, just doing an amazing job cleaning up for the Canadian defense. And just to be safe, Serlinga sends it all the way back. Agliarulo hammers it forward. Christine Lilly trying to get free. And she's taken down and is a little bit slow to get up. Brianna Boyd there. Pellerou trying to get his record to even Steven at 14 wins and 14 losses, but right now it's 1 1. Nikki Serlenga, by the way, has replaced Lori Fair, I believe. Fair is the one I can't find on the field, so I believe it's Serlenga has replaced Fair. And like you said, Jerry, just so much depth there. You can put any one of these players and know that they're going to do a good job. Here's Swiatek. Nonan. For Latham, a little too far. Chastain fakes the header and then just lets it go. Nonan just not getting her foot on the ball well on that. Got a little bit of a spin and went out. Lily and over the top there was Isabel Harvey, so it will be the U.S. ball. Chastain quickly to Lily. Cleared away there by Neal. Too far and Chastain again. Back for Reddick. Sobrero. Kramer. Harlow. Loses out. Here's Hooper the other way. A lead pass for Christine Latham, who's unable to save it. Unfortunate there. Charmaine seeing Latham wide open on the right hand side. Tried to get it through just a little too much on it, and the ball went out, unfortunately. Reddick sends it down. Harlow 
forward, but it's cleaned up again by the Canadian back line, Harvey. For Christine Sinclair, but here's Kramer now. Foudy to Chastain. Parlow has it. Parlow for Milbrett, who's in behind. Milbrett with one move around the keeper and back. That time is Isabel Morneau to save it. What a great job by Isabel Morneau. Making sure she's back there, cleaning up after that. Tiffany Milbrett doing a great job moving forward, and Isabel just making sure she didn't have a chance to score. Oh, and then Foudy gets it in there, but that was offside, but that was a great move. And here she is, Milbert moving forward, has all the space, and Isabel Morneau really out of nowhere. And this is where her speed is so important. That's what she's known for. She's a very fast player, takes the ball away from Milbert. Canada a little bit sloppy, I guess is the best word, or a little bit slow to react there, allowing Milbert to get free in the first place. Actually, I really find playing, uh, playing against Milbert when I was a player, she was one of the toughest players to play against because she is so fast. That ball sent down there, headed away. Here's Foudy. Bertini is bothering her. U.S. ball. The last three times these teams have played, Canada has two wins and a draw, although the one win at the Algarve Cup was basically against the U.S. under-19 team. But the three-to-one win last fall was, you have to give Canada full measure for that one. And really, that's amazing, Jerry, because before that, we hadn't come close since 1986. Here's Nonan moving forward. Kramer is back to bother her, but Nonan recovers. That ball too far for Latham. Christina Kiss probably should have looked at the other side. Christine Sinclair looked like she had a little bit more space than Latham. Here's Morneau. Boyd. Back to Swiatek. Folks, if you start to wonder if it looks like it's getting a little bit dark on your screen here tonight, well, we can tell you that all of the lights on the one side of the field, on the far side, are out as Milbrick comes forward again, takes a shot, scores! <laughs> Tiffany Milbrick from well out was able to loop that one over the keeper, Swiatek. And in the 57th minute, it's 2-1 to one U.S. And really, Jerry, no chance for Swiatek on that one. The Canadian de defense getting caught on that, perhaps a little bit flat-footed. And just a great strike by Tiffany Milbert. And we watch it here. It's taken so well. No chance for Swiatek. No chance at all. And here we go. Beautifully taken. Just over top of Swiatek. So Tiffany Milbrett has paid dividends since coming on. One great opportunity and then the goal. And so the United States now in the lead, two to one, and perhaps in control of this game, judging by the way they've played the last 30 minutes or so going back to the first half. And this is the U.S. squad I remember playing against. Really getting a great rhythm going, touching the ball, playing quick passes, lots of opportunities. And hopefully the Canadian Canadian players can pick up the pace a little and try and get a little bit more of an attack on. Bertini down for Christine Sinclair. Hooper's in front, so is Latham. It's knocked in front, but it's cleared away by Catherine Ruddick. Still available there, and there's a shot, score! Christine Sinclair has equalized for Canada! What an amazing strike by the young player, Christine Sinclair. Perfectly, perfectly placed. The crowd is going crazy. That is exactly what Canada needed. And they needed it at that point. They waited no longer than just a minute to get back on equal terms. Had they gone 10 or 15 without a goal, you might wonder if they could come back, but here it is again. And it all started with Sinclair and a great cross in. Trying to get cleared there. Charmaine Hooper doing a great job here of getting up. Keeper really should have come out and tried to get that one. Charmaine beating her to it. And Sinclair not even taking a touch. First time back of the net. 2-2 two, two, the score with just over half an hour still to go. Lots of action in this one. An offer line comes Swiatek that time to take it away from Parlow. And there's the goal. Beautiful.
Nonan downfield. Now I had started to say a while ago, I'll try to get it out this time. If you're wondering if it starts to get a little bit dark, all the lights on the west side of the field are out. A transformer blue, and there's only half the lights in the stadium working as Latham tries to get in free to the box. Canada looking for a penalty here. It won't be called by referee Sonia Denencourt. And I think that's a that's a good call by Sonia. Definitely there was a tough tough tackle there, but they were both going in hard and equal opportunity there. They both went in top. They rolled shoulder to shoulder. You can see right there. Good call by Sonia Denencourt. Randy Chastain there against Christine Latham. The action non-stop here in the second half. Canada and the United States. Chastain back to Reddick who clears. It's 2-2. Kiss sends it in deep. Chastain back. Latham on her. Chastain waits to let it go, hoping to get it to go to a goal kick, but it only goes for a throw in as Latham was able to get to it and knock it out of bounds. Here's Hooper now. Takes a shot from well out. That was a little bit hopeful, I think, but still, Canada getting some chances here. And it's great to see they're really taking advantage of these chances. And even though, you know, Charmaine was a little bit far out, she has an amazing strike. She knows she can score from there, and she has to take opportunities like that. Pagliarulo downfield. And we're seeing the Canadian squad winning a lot more of these first balls, which is really important. They have to win these first balls, not let the Americans get control and get the rhythm going. Throw into the U.S. It'll be Alicia Kramer taking it. Kramer looking for Parlow, but Isabel Harvey was there. Canada's ball. U.S. win it. Here's Sobrero. Fires one in there, looking that time for Lilly, headed away by Harvey. Cooper now, bothered from behind, it eventually goes to Chastain. Kramer. American Lilly. Making sure Charmaine's really uh, marked tightly there. Yeah, Foudy is right up against her in that play. Here's Chastain. All the way down, and way out comes Swiatek and had no choice but to just knock it away. <laughs> Tiffany Milbrook looking for a ball to try and get it back in play here. Lily back to Kramer. Cleared by Nonan. Latham flicks it nicely. She's on her own. Hooper trying to get up there as Christine Latham works one on one now against Sobrero. Lays it off for Hooper. And Hooper is hammered right there. And look at this. She's hammered right there by Reddick. And so it'll be a free kick to Canada in a very tight spot. And here's the foul. Charmaine getting just pummeled down there, but a great run by Latham to get down there, get the ball, and get the ball across to Charmaine, although Sinclair was wide open on the left-hand side as well. So an opportunity for Canada here from just outside the box. Hooper is there, ready to take it. So is Kiss, and so is Nonan. Latham, Sinclair up front, there's Hooper shot, and off the post! Hooper with the shot off the post had everybody had the wall and the keeper beaten. It swung back in there again this time. The offside flag goes up. Wow. Charmaine is known for her free kicks, and this one is just perfectly taken. A little bit, an inch, and she would have had that. Unbelievable. And so the scoreline holds at two. Here's Serlanga. Reddick. Reddick with lots of time, and so she takes the time before handing it off to Sobrero. Foudy.
He can't handle it. Here's Kiss. Sinclair. For Bertini, who's got room. Bertini shot off the mark as she was bothered by Sobrero. Well, Jerry, Canada is on fire these last few minutes, obviously energized by their goal. They are doing amazing. And here's that play. Sinclair doing a great job of finding Bertini on the left. And Bertini, just one more step, and she would have had a great shot, but she was being bothered there, like you said, Jerry. But a great effort. Good opportunities here for Canada. First, the post by Hooper on the free kick, and then that opportunity with Sinclair and Bertini hooking up together. Meanwhile, back comes the United States. And there's the left-footed shot by Milbert, and a good save there by Swiatek. Tiffany Milbert has been the most dangerous American since she's come onto the pitch here, and Swiatek made a great save there. Great save by Swiatek, but like I said, Milbert is so dangerous. That's what she does well, is go at defenders. Here's Hooper now. And she can't make any headway. Sobrero clears for the U.S. to Foudy. Bertini for Canada. Back to Nonan. Cleared off by Chastain and then by Foudy. Bertini. Her pass goes right to Kramer. Kramer tries to send it in deep for Milbrook, but there's Nonan. Cleared by Chastain. Oh, tripped up there is Lilly. No foul called against Morneau. Cooper for Sinclair. Can't hold it. And here's a great save. What a good job. Swiatek staying on her line, making sure she had that all covered. Milbert, again, a great strike and a great run forward. Sobrero, offside. Really, the Americans right now relying on those forwards penetrating behind the Canadian defense. And the Canadian defense is doing a really good job of keeping everything covered so that none of those players can get through. And if they do, they're offside. Here's Nonan. Into the middle for Hooper. Tries to flick it on, and there's a shot, and it's just off the mark by Christine Latham. That attacking trio are doing an unbelievable job of creating chances. And here we go, Charmaine, knowing Latham is there. And Latham, first time volley. That is one of the hardest things to do, and she does a great job. Pagliarulo. Fowdy up against Bertini. Ball is still available before Lilly takes it down from Milbrick. Into Carlo. Carlo knocked down by Sinclair, who went down and a little bit slow to get up, but she's on her feet. Canada's ball. This is a scrappy affair now. Sinclair in the middle of it there with Carlo. Sinclair playing forward and is back defending on her own third. That is amazing to see a striker doing something like that and working so hard. He misfires, but Nonan is there to cover. Foudy to Kramer. Kramer to Parlo. No offside call. There's Parlo continuing to work. Gets it in front and cleared off the line there. Well, cleared out of play, actually, by Harvey. But Canada slow there to react. They were looking for the flag. Didn't get it, but stopped anyway, almost. It looked like Isabel Morneau thought that was called because she was in position to get that ball. Here's Chastain in front. Christine Lilly with a great opportunity misses the net. Yeah, and now Morneau with her hands up in the air. I think you're right. I think she did think that the play had been called and it had not. 
It did. It sounded like there was a whistle there, Jerry, in the crowd, and she stopped. She had possession of the ball, and she stopped. Parlo came through and uh, could have been dangerous for the Canadian side. There's Nona. Latham tries to head it on for Hooper. Chastain knocks it out. So putting it back in play quickly is, well, she changes her mind. Christina Kiss looked like she was going to, and then she leaves it for Harvey. Great turn by Charmaine. Hooper in for Bertini, who can't control it. Kiss for Latham. Bertini. Back to Latham. The shot, or Christina Kiss, pardon me, and Kyler Rulo had to be quick. It looked like a bit of a late reaction by the goalkeeper there. And a great effort by little Christina Kiss, another young player that's come onto the squad, doing a wonderful job out there. And here's a look at the shot right now. Takes it first time, and Peglia Rulo has to make that save. I think she was a little slow to react there, just barely got it in time. The result is a corner kick for Canada to be taken from the far side. And Kiss will take it. Canada dominating these last 15 minutes, Jerry. And a substitution here by the United States, so we'll hold off on the penalty kick. Chastain is out. And into the game is Jenna Klugel. There's the corner kick by Kiss. Knocked away, I think it was Parlo. And so that's another corner kick for Canada. Cooper a little bit slow there to get up. Lots of action, and it's tough action in close there. Bertini will take this corner kick. There's Jenna Klugel, who just came on for Chastain. Bertini's ball. There's a shot from Latham, unable to get the shot she wanted. Great ball in by Silvana Bertini. She's a lefty, so you get the curve going inwards and a great effort by Latham to get on the end of that and get a shot off. Under 20 minutes to go. Great game here, 2-2 with lots of opportunities at either end, posts being hit. Here's Sobrero. The only thing we haven't seen here is a penalty. Lily. Pounded by Bertini, who comes up with it. This is a physical game. There's not much doubt about that. <laughs> a lot of rivalry between Canada and the U.S. We've played them so many times, and you know the Canadian squad is out there to win. Sobrero. Nona knocks it the other way. Hooper fighting against Klugel. There's Kramer. Back for Klugel. Hooper steps in front. And then Hooper with the foul that time on Foudy. Klugel to Sobrero to Foudy. Foudy in deep, knocked away by Boyd. Hooper. There's three players on her. <laughs> and still manages to get that ball off. Here's Foudy now as the U.S. comes on strong. Lilly for Milbritt, who's in behind. There's the shot, and it's over the net. And again, they let Tiffany Milbritt in behind. And if you do that, it's just simply too dangerous. Milbritt, again, the most dangerous player out there, having so many opportunities to score. And here we go again. Makes a great run from behind the defenders. The Canadian defenders getting caught just not getting under, over that bar, ball, fortunately for the Canadian squad. And Charmaine Hooper has come off, so her day is over. She's replaced by Claire Rustad. Claire Rustad is definitely on. Hooper is out, and Randy Hermes is coming into the game as well. Harvey to put it back in play. And that's Claire Rustad that's come on. Rustad and Hermes are both on. And I know that uh, Hooper is out. We're just trying to get the name of the other Canadian player who's out. 
Sherlton Nonan is out. Pardon me. And that's an interesting substitution there, Jerry. I think Sherlton Nonan and Savannah and uh, Charmaine Hooper have been two of the better players on the field today. Here's Latham. By Sobrero. For Sinclair. Bertini's in front. Down into the corner to Chaser is Reddick. Sinclair does well, but can't quite get it in front. Working hard there, and that's what she gets for it. She gets a corner kick. So Canada continuing to attack. Hooper, though, is out of the game. Into the game, Claire Rostad, number 14. Randy Hermes is in as well, number 11. And the other one out is Sherolta Nonan. And Evan Peller, perhaps a little strategy there, taking out a defender and a striker and putting in two midfielders. Here's Christina Kiss with the corner kick. In there nicely, cleared away. Bertini tries to move up to take a shot, can't do it, and it's cleared finally by Reddick. And it looked like that ball was almost on that line before it got cleared. He's very close. Here's Harvey. For Latham, she can't bring it down. Klugel for Kramer. Rustad is there. And Kiss knocks it in, but it's Reddick. Sobrero. Milbrit. Screamer. Blugel sends it forward, hoping that Parlo can run onto the end of it. But Randy Hermes is there first. Randy Hermes from Langley, BC, plays for the Vancouver Breakers. This will be a corner kick for the United States. And Isabel Harvey looking for a foul. And didn't get it. Short corner by Milbert to Lilly. Back for Milbert. Milbert into the far post, knocked away. Boyd knocked it away that time. United States keeping the pressure on, headed away by Hermes. Here's Sobrero. Finally, it's Morneau, but it's cleared into the stands. And Brianna Boyd really getting on the end of a lot of these, these headers and uh, winning them away from the United States. It's so important. They're so dangerous in the air, and Brianna Boyd doing a good job of covering that area for the Canadian squad. Boyd for the throw-in. Boyd's from Edmonton. Milbrit always lurking dangerously in front, waiting for that one to get through to her. It didn't. And then that one goes all the way to Swiatek. Again, Swiatek looking so comfortable coming off of the line. Such an important, important skill for goalkeepers. Knocked back in by Klugel. Here's Randy Hermes. Who's basically taken over for Sherolton Nonan in the back. Kiss. Harvey. In for Latham. Kiss again. Sinclair is over there, and so was Rustad, but out came Pegli Rulo. Too much height on that cross by Kiss. If that had been driven in, there was a good chance a Canadian could have gotten on the end of that. And Isabel Morneau knocks it away. U.S. throw in. And all of a sudden, the skies are very dark in the west. We'll watch for thunder and lightning. It's been very humid in Toronto, and thunderstorms always a possibility. 11 minutes 
minute to go in this game still a 2 2 tie. And there is thunder off in the distance. Here's Harvey. Now Plugel. Bothered by Latham. Plugel comes away with it. Sinclair, but that looked like a handball. This has been such an exciting half so far, Jerry. There's Morneau. Sinclair now. Sinclair still with it in for Bertini. Bertini has two players on her. One is Ms. Kramer. And the United States come away with it. Ball getting a little caught up in Solana's feet there. And it is getting dark. The dark clouds and the fact there are no lights here making it very dark on the far side. Milbrit in. Flugel and the thunder is getting louder. And it's getting windy as well. Dust blowing up here. All of a sudden it's not a very appealing place right now. Throw in to Canada. Here's Kiss. Flugel for the U.S. Foudy sends it in. Morneau is over there, so is Milbrook racing after it. And it goes all the way through the end line. And Canada will take over under 10 minutes. And the U.S. really hasn't created, other than the Tiffany Milbrook's chances, those are the ones that have been the most dangerous. The Canadian squad really attacking and really creating a lot more chances than the American side this half. There's a shot by Milbrook. Didn't get through. Here's Kramer. Milbrook again working nicely with Lilly. Here's, here's Milbrook bothered by Boyd. Wow. Free kick to the United States just outside the box now with only eight minutes and a little bit to go in the game. And really, I thought that was a good tackle. Looked like she got all ball. Maybe got a little bit of uh, Tiffany Milbrook just a little shoulder to shoulder, but I don't think that was a call. There's the shot in there. The wall does its job. Morneau clears. Bertini then does the rest of it. The organizers had planned a fireworks display, a Canada Day fireworks display at the end of this game. There may be fireworks before the end of the game, <laughs> judging by the sky. We may just get away with this here. <laughs> Looks like there's a storm coming, that's for sure. There's Sinclair. Through for Bertini. Claire Rustad is hustling to get up front in the middle. Bertini waits. Working on Nikki Serlanga. Throw in for Canada. Score still 2-2. Last few moments of this game now. And Bertina, Bertini doing a good job this half. She's been really moving forward, and that's created a lot of good opportunities for the Canadian squad, giving them one more attacker. And an American player down in the field, and I don't know who that is. I didn't see what happened there. It's Kate Sobrero. Obviously in some discomfort there, and Sobrero has helped off the field. Didn't see any, any tackle there. Obviously away from the play. So a bit of a delay here while they get Sobrero off the field. And try to get this game over with before this pending storm. If it materializes. Cindy Parlow, 5'11", along with Alicia Kramer, the two tallest players in the field. Sinclair. Works her way back, retains possession. 
for Bertini. Knocked in front. In front is Christine Latham. But she gets tangled up with the goalkeeper, Pagliarulo. And really give credit again to Christine Sinclair for finding Silvana Bertini on the side and getting the ball in there. That was a beautiful, beautiful play. Here's Kramer. Foudy. In for Parlo. Cleared away by Boyd. Throw in from Milbrook. Parlo is fouled right on the edge of the box by Randy Hermas. That's Parlo's strength, is holding off players, and really the only thing a Canadian defender could do there is foul her. She's so good at holding that ball up. Here's the free kick. Milbrett swings it in, and there's the keeper, Swiatek, to make the save. Tiffany Milbert with a great strike, and Swiatek just reaching out, getting a hand on it, and tapping it over the bar. She's having an amazing game. Corner kick to the U.S. Swings it in there, and again, Swiatek had to be sharp. That one was really curling in towards the, co the post. That was definitely curling into the post, and Swiatek doing a wonderful job of keeping her eye on the ball. Short kick this time by the U.S. Here's Milbrett, the Foudy, deflected by Sinclair. And here goes Christine Sinclair. Bertini is on the left side. Sinclair running out of options, though. Lays it off to Kiss. Kiss in deep, and out comes Pagliarulo. Kiss just not hitting that well off her foot. She had the right intention. She wanted to get over to uh, Bertini. Unfortunately, just a little too, too much on that, a little too loopy, and the keeper came up for that one. Kluger for Foudy. At the Reddick to Flugel. Flugel, pardon me. Flugel sends it in deep. Knocked by Harvey. Neal against Serlenga, and then Morneau. Reddick back the other way. Serlenga. Milbrit <laughs> bumped and fouled by Boyd. Milbrit just such a threat in this half. If she's not shooting and getting breakaways, she's getting fouled and creating chances that way. Milbrit will take this one. Still available there. The U.S. will keep the pressure on, at least for the moment. Here's Kramer. And finally, it's out of harm's way, and Canada will take over with Swiatek. It's amazing to see the American, especially the defenders, just kicking the ball out sometimes. Obviously, they've been rattled, and they feel like that's their only option at certain times. Skies continue to darken, but the storm seems to have held off, at least for now, or gone around. There's Kluger. Reddick. Again, there we see the American defenders just kicking that ball forward. So uncharacteristic of the American squad. Here's Claire Rostad. She was looking for Latham. Sinclair is also looking for Latham. Back is Reddick and out is Pagliarulo. And here's Bertini on it, and she can't bring it down. If she had been able to get a shot away, Pagliarulo was way out. She might have been able to loft one over top of her, but she just didn't have time to bring it down and get a shot away. And I saw Bertini's head up. She saw the keeper way off her line. Was trying to get that ball down, but it looked like it hit a little bit of her neck instead of her chest. <laughs> the 
Chris Dean Latham has played very well up front for Canada. And they get a corner kick here with under a minute to go, plus whatever time is deemed necessary to add on here by referee Sonia Denencourt. There's the kick, a little bit high. And it's knocked away. And you would have thought that Hermes might have had a little more time to take that ball and maybe do something better with it there. In situations like that, you almost want the player to just continue running with the ball because the American defenders were coming out quite quickly trying to get the Canadians on the offside trap. Americans trying to get in deep, cleared away. Fires on that one, cleared by Kiss, but here's Klugel. There's an extra ball on the field, and Klugel calmly kicks it away. Swiatek mishandles one, and that was nearly what would have been the winning goal right there. Wow, Swiatek mishandled it, and Cindy Parlow had a great opportunity. As it is, they will have a corner kick here. Swiatek coming up for that one, sliding a little bit, losing the ball, trying to get back at it. Luckily, the defenders cleaned up after that one. Corner kick doesn't do anything. And there is the final whistle. An interesting affair to be sure, and perhaps the 2-2 draw is the best result. The U.S. with probably the, the best possession and most domination, but Canada with great opportunities for more than just the two goals. Almost definitely, Jerry. I would say that the Canadian squad has to be happy with that. Evan Pellerud must be just ecstatic because the team played amazing they created amazing chances and it's something we've never done in the past before this is definitely a new team and a new beginning for the canadian canadian side a full house at varsity stadium in toronto on the day before canada day this one ends in a one or a two two draw and we will be back to wrap up our show from varsity stadium in toronto in just a moment